the Komote is probably the most iconic no mask. It is the representative creepy no mask, right? But do you know whose face this is? And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Even if you're not a no theater trainee like I am, I'm sure you've seen no masks somewhere before. They often show up in anime and video games as something scary. But many of my friends don't even know about the connections with the traditional stage culture. No theater is a mask play, so obviously they are a crucial item within the show. However, if they are simply stage items, why are they all so scary looking? Is no all about horror stories and ghosts? So today, as a no theater trainee in Kyoto, I will talk about the history of both no theater and no masks, and explain what the three most famous no masks represent. Also, at the end of the video, I will talk about the three reasons why the no masks are created so spooky and scary. So I hope you can enjoy this video till the end. Deepening your understanding towards no masks will not only be a chance for you to know more about the traditional stage art, but it'll also be a chance for you to enjoy anime and video games that they are peer in too. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So First of all, let me briefly explain about the history of no theater and no masks. The origin of no theater is a form of miscellaneous art called sangaku that was brought to Japan from China in the 8th century. It was originally a kind of street performance with acrobatic stunts, magic, and puppet shows. However, once it started to be influenced by the Japanese palace culture in the ancient Heian period, it transformed more into a comedy show played on stage to make the audience laugh. As they started to be performed at important rituals and shrines, the stage art became more and more popular, and it began to take in and blend together the culture of singing and dancing that were popular at that time. By the Muromachi period, the stage art had completely evolved into the no that we know of today. No, which we know of today, by the two famous founders, Kangami and Tsuyami. The entertainment value in the past had faded away and had become more of a ritualistic and religious stage performance. Since then, no theater had continued to win the patronage of the samurai leaders of each era, and the famous Oda Nobunaga, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, and Tokugawa Yes are all known to have cherished the art. Toyotomi Hideyoshi is famous for loving no theater so much that he played in it himself. During the Edo period that Tokugawa Yasu established, no theater was considered to be Bushi no Shikigaku, meaning the samurai code of etiquette. No theater has experienced many crises of extinction through westernization and the post wars. However, thanks to the hard work of the no actors in the past, it became a UNESCO intangible heritage in 2001, and we are still able to enjoy this beautiful stage art even today. If you've never had a chance to see a no performance before, I have the link to a video that my no master is performing as the main character, so I hope you can check that out later too. Then, when do the no masks come into this story? The origins of the masks actually did it back to the Kamakura period, during the development of the no theater when it was still more of a comedy show. By the time Kanami and Zami completed the no theater during the Romachi period, many different kinds of masks were created by talented craftsmen all over Japan. Around the time of rule by Oda Nobunaga and Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the no masks reached its full development. In the following Edo period, successive craftsmen began to make no masks from generation to generation. By this time, there were less new creations 
and the main focus was on faithfully copying the original masks from the Muromachi period. But why did they have to wear masks in the first place? Let's take a look at the next chapter to find out. Next, let's talk about the three major no masks and take a look at some examples. One, Hakushikijo. Two, Hanya. Three, Komote. One, Hakushikijo. Hakushikijo is the first no mask to be born, and it was made even before no theater itself was completed. It has a very unique characteristic like no other no mask. The separate chin part is tied together with a string. It is still used in the important and special piece called Okina today. Okina is more of a celebration dance rather than a play and features the appearance of an old god using this mask to appreciate the peace and tranquility of the land. This is the only piece where the performer goes out on stage with a bare face and puts on the no mask in front of the audience as part of the performance. So it is considered something very special. Two, Hanya. Hanya is a vicious looking no mask that I'm very sure you've seen somewhere before. But can you guess what this mask represents? The Hanya mask is actually the face of a woman who became a demon due to the raging emotions of jealousy, anger, and sorrow. When I first found out about this, I remember I was very shocked because I grew up believing that it was just a scary yokai or something and never imagined it to be a woman. In no theater, there are some sad stories of samurai betraying their loved ones or cheating on them. And this is when these masks are used to depict the fierceness and sadness. Three, komote. The komote is probably the most iconic no mask. And I think it'll be very difficult to find a Japanese person who has not seen it before. It is the representative creepy no mask, right? But do you know whose face this is? It is actually the face of a young, beautiful woman. Yes, you heard me correctly. Young and beautiful. It is also widely used for the roles of female spirits, goddesses, and celestial beings. But most of the time, they do not represent anything negative or haunting. The main character that my master is acting as in the video inside the description box he is actually wearing the komote to represent a female snow angel. But not just the komote, but the kojo that represents an old man, or chujo that represents a noble man, all look pretty creepy too. But then why do they have to look so creepy? Let's finally talk about today's main topic in the last chapter. Then lastly, let me introduce the three reasons why no masks are so creepy, according to the studying and training I have done as a no theater trainee. One, they represent gods and spirits. Two, the aesthetic sense was different from what it is now. Three, there are multiple emotions expressed in one face. One, they represent gods and spirits. The first reason is the simplest. The reason why masks are used in no theater in the first place is because we want to act as someone or something that we are not. Many of the no masks represent gods, spirits, and devils that Japanese people were afraid of. And that is why they would often have frightening facial expressions to reflect the people's respect and fear. It is believed that the gods and spirits actually reside in these masks. So even today, the professional no actors will handle their no masks with the utmost care, never keeping it on the floor and always bowing to it before wearing. Two, the aesthetic sense was different from what it is now. 
But then what about no masks that doesn't represent gods and spirits? Like the komote that represents beautiful young woman we saw earlier. Why do they look scary? It is because what we considered a beautiful woman during the Muromachi period was very different from today. In the past, it was considered vulgar and inappropriate to show joy, anger, sorrow, and pleasure on one's face. And expressionlessness was a standard of beauty for the people of the high ranks. If you have ever heard of the traditions, Ohaguro, where women dye their teeth black, this was also to deliberately darken their mouths to avoid having someone reading their expressions. The komote might seem mysterious or eerie, but it is because the aesthetic sense was different from what it is now. 3. There are multiple emotions expressed in one face. The third reason I personally feel is the most interesting of the three, and it was the reason why I got more and more interested in studying about no masks. Each no mask actually has more than one emotion expressed in its face. What does that even mean? Let me give you an example. This is the Hanya mask that I introduced earlier. Could you please hide its lower half with your hand? Can you see that the scary and vicious looking face suddenly starts to turn into a more sad expression? Next, hide the upper half. Now it's completely an angry and fierce face, right? Not only does no masks allow you to become something that humans cannot be, it also gives you a face that expresses multiple emotions in one facial expression, which is also impossible for us humans to do. This is also the reason why no masks are never created by lateral symmetry, and oftentimes the right side represents a darker in face, and the left side represents a brighter young face. That's because due to the shape of the no stages, the no actors will always show up on stage showing their right side of their face to the audience as they appear, and the left side as they leave. Because in the end of most stories, even the evil spirits are saved and could go to heaven. The left side of their faces that they show to the audience as they leave must seem happier and more relaxed. Because every no mask's facial expression is created by combining multiple motions on one face, it might seem unnatural and somewhat ominous. Then lastly, today's conclusion. The origin of no theater was a form of miscellaneous art that was brought in from China to Japan in the 8th century. It evolved into the no theater we know of today by the Muromachi period by two famous founders, Kangami and Seami. No theater continued to win the patronage of the samurai leaders of each era, and during the Edo period, it was considered to be Bushi no Shikigak, meaning the samurai code of etiquette. The culture of wearing masks during the performance had existed since the Kamakura period and reached full development around the latter half of the Sengoku era. During the Edo period, successive craftsmen began to make no masks from generation to generation, but from there, there were less new creations, and their main focus was on faithfully copying the original masks from the Muromachi period. The three most common masks that especially show up in Japanese subculture are 1. Hakushikijo, an old god that appreciates the peace and tranquility of the land. 2. Hanya, the face of a woman who became a demon due to the raging emotions of jealousy, anger, and sorrow. 3. Komote, the face of a young, beautiful woman, such as female spirits, goddesses, and sensual beings. The three reasons why the no masks look so creepy are 1. They represent gods and spirits. 2. The aesthetic sense was different from what it is now. 3. There are multiple emotions expressed in one face. No masks are worn for the actors to become something that humans cannot be or do. 
And that's why the Japanese people have felt respect and fear towards the masks since ancient times. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you thought, well, Shogo, I understand what each mask represents now, but I still am a little bit scared. Please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And my goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And please check out our sub channel and membership through the link inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Dumbo, arigatouzaimashita. Someone asked me before that if you've been training for in, in no theater, in no theater training for a long time, does like, do you get used to seeing a no mask? Is it not scary for you anymore? But to be very honest, uh, I do of course understand it and I see it on stage or on stage a lot too, of course. But still, when you see it like, you know, up close, it is still very scary. And I actually asked my, uh, my master the same question and he's not like, what should I say? like scare like he, when he would like see a horror movie kind of thing, but he still does feel some kind of fear, I guess. It's more like respect when he sees the mask too. So I guess you just simply never get used to it, yes.